Hello everyone, welcome to Rappler Talk. I am Pia Renata. Last week, President-elect Ferdinand Marcos Jr. said that he plans to take over the Agriculture Department at least temporarily in order to uh, make sure that people see how of much of a priority the agriculture sector is to the new government. And we thought, who better to ask about this development than the outgoing Agriculture Secretary of President Rodrigo Duterte, William Dar. So thank you so much, Secretary Dar, for joining us. Today we have him and we want to ask him all about this development and what he thinks the challenges are for President-elect Marcos in terms of handling food security and the agricultural sector. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Magandang araw, uh, Pia, and the rest of your televiewers. Good morning. Yes, Secretary Dar, you have been Agriculture Secretary for President Duterte since 2019, and you actually also served less than a year under Estrada as Agricultural Chief. So definitely, you've had experience handling this department, which pretty soon President Ilek Marcos will have in his hands. So, Siguro, sir, your first question for you would be, what were your initial thoughts when you heard that President Ilek Marcos wants to take over this sector, this department? I said I am one of the happiest Filipinos welcoming this development because no less than the president will have that time to understand uh, the complexity of challenges uh, facing Philippine agriculture. I have said before that uh, Philippine agriculture has been neglected all these years. It's uh, been uh, 30 years or more. And uh, as a result of that neglect, uh, the growth of agriculture is stunted while population growth is uh, beyond the annual growth of uh, Philippine agriculture. So there is a big challenge really if the uh, agriculture sector is not given the priority attention that now President-elect Bongbong Marcos, uh, who will also take the saddle dito po sa Department of Agriculture, so really uh, now, itama na yung prioridad na ibibigay sa sektor ng agrikultura at yung kaakibat na budgetary support ay maitama na rin kasi yung, uh, yung uh, sinabi ko na uh, neglected uh, many ways uh, at ang number one na neglect yung budgetary support sa sektor ng agrikultura. Mm-hmm. Uh, Secretary, before nabanggit niyo po that you had a set of recommendations to give to Marcos Jr. and his cabinet, just wondering if you have been been g- given the chance to meet with the president-elect or at least hand over those rec- recommendations. And if not, when will this happen? Yeah, the transition report is ready. We are uh, uh, ready anytime at his convenience to be given the briefing uh, based on the transition report. You know, on uh, Wednesday, actually, uh, we will make known again to the public. We'll have a press conference that's uh, June 29th, about 11 o'clock in the morning, to uh, highlight the near-term, medium, and long-term recommendations uh, based on this uh, document titled Transition Report. So we are ready anytime. Uh, yeah. Mm, okay. In the press conference where Marcos announced he would become the agriculture chief, at least temporarily, no, he mentioned reorganizing the National Food Authority and the Food Terminal Inc. Um, he said they have changed their functions over the years, quote unquote, and it's time to return them to those original functions. Um, can you explain what he might mean by that? What kind of reorganization are we looking at? Okay, uh, unahin ko yung FTI. Ang FTI ay nasa Office of the President. So we have been working for the transfer of FTI to the uh, Secretary's Office para ay, itong food terminal system, FTI will be uh, the core of the food terminal system that we have planned for the whole country. So that's very critical na nandun sa office than doon sa Department of Agriculture, ang NFT, FTI. So through an executive order, uh, President-elect Bongbong Marcos can easily transfer that. Number two, sa National Food Authority naman, alam mm-hmm. naman ninyo yung mandato ng NFA uh, base doon sa rice tarification law. 
the only mandate or responsibility of NFA is buffer stacking. Pero uh, yung buffer stacking nila pia ay uh, with with that major responsibility, there is very little budget also uh, being given National Food Authority seven billion pesos a year, which is equivalent to a seven-day buffer stocking. Mm -hmm. Now, through an executive order, the president-elect, Bumbung Marcos, can also issue and uh, make the buffer stocking of NFA at the level of 30-day buffer stocking. Now, let me mention publicly the buffer stock of India in rice is 365 days. That's the same for China, and yet we only have seven days. So this is one way for NFA to be strengthened so that the procurement level ng palay locally ay meron mas malaking exposure ang NFA and uh, competing uh, in a positive way with the traders uh, during main harvest twice a year dito sa ating bansa. So they need necessarily additional budget to start good for this year of 4 billion pesos to go mm -hmm. to the level of 9-day buffer stocking. Then by target middle of next year, uh, th uh, 15 days. By the end of next year, 30 days. So there is time to evolve and to recapitalize NFA, including the uh, uh, strengthening, if not construction, of their facilities, drying, milling, and warehousing. Mm -hmm. One priority that si President Elec Marcos mentioned in his press con was how to stem the rise in food prices. We know that it's being driven by so many things, including the Ukraine-Russian conflict. Inflation has really been rising so much. And talaga umaari ni mga Filipinos here. What would you recommend be the first actions that President Elec, Elec Marcos takes to address this? Well, we need to sustain the stride we made in uh, rice production in this country. We have to mention PIA, last two years record harvest rice one after the other. In 2021, 19.3 million metric tons record harvest in rice then. But last year we eclipsed that, we went to 19.96 million metric tons record harvest. So, uh, and that brought us to 92%, let me repeat, that uh, level of 19.96 million metric tons brings us to about 92% level of uh, rice efficiency in the country. Now, with the problems of uh, increasing petroleum prices, of course, the attendant issues brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, where global food supply chain is disrupted heavily, and now compounded by the Ukraine war, then you can see the challenge in rice production because agricultural input like uh, uh, fertilizer costs have tripled. And mm -hmm. of course, we don't manufacture any kilo of fertilizer in the country. And our uh, land areas is not growing. It is constricting. So we need to use the power of science and technology and uh, inputs like uh, chemical fertilizers to really uh, have enough uh, at least going to that level of sufficiency uh, for the Filipino people. So ganun po, uh, i-sustain natin. We have to give fertilizer subsidies. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the time this year. And let me point out, Pia, we have already uh, production for uh, first semester and the data uh, indicates that we have a reduction of 6.8% in yields because mm -hmm. of the uh, low usage of fertilizers, chemical fertilizers. Mm -hmm. So yun. Uh, uh, the mga farmers yung fertilizer. But Secretary, what is the scale to which these subsidies should be given? Like how much of a uh, subsidy should be given and how often? Because we often hear the, the farmers parang 
more than double na ba yung price of fertilizer at least nung camping period i remember it was a major issue then so what what level can you be more specific about the subsidies yeah, I'll, give you, I'll give you specifics uh the uh, this wet season planting mm. if we go by a combination of uh 50% chemical fertilizer Mm. with uh, supplementation of uh, organic fertilizer plus biofertilizers, we still need the level of 15 billion pesos uh, this wet season planting. So that's mm. the kind of subsidy if we have to sustain the levels of production that we had last year. 15 billion worth of subsidies for this year alone. Yes, yes. Mm. Okay. Um, another issue, sir, no, that has been cropping up, especially, pardon me for the pun, um, during the campaign season was your rice tarification law. So different candidates were saying that they're open to amendments. The Senate itself said that they would be open to amendments. What uh, do you think Marcos should push for amendments to this law? Okay, number one, we need to have to conduct the midterm evaluation of such a law. The rice tarification law including the uh, Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund, whether mm -hmm. or not the intents and purposes of the law are uh, properly met, then we can make the adjustments if there are uh, borne out by the midterm evaluation. And that's why, Pia, remember, I was already uh, alluding to the increase of budgetary support to MFA so that the, the, their mandate can be fully be subscribed, uh, like 30-day buffer stocking for the country, so that during calamities, ay hindi tayo nagkakaranda pa, nagkakandara pa, naghahanap ng pagkain, at mayroon pa rin uh, buffer stock uh, na man managed by National Food Authority. At the same time, I have also this uh, proposal why not we ask the local government units, mas lalo na yung uh, below 20 na mga provincial governments na may pagkukulang pa rin sa rice production nila na dapat mag stocking din nila, mag-invest sila ng mga facilities for them to procure uh, provinces na uh, may surplus sa rice production. And they can stock for their people and this is one sure way na hindi sila mawawalan ng rice supply. So lahat ito, this can also help sustain properly, uh, uh, give the farmers during harvest a uh, higher level of uh, prices for their uh, palay. Kasi karamihan ay uh, bumabagsak ang presyuhan sa palay kung uh, anihan, dalawang uh, parte ng taon at uh, ayaw natin yan mangyari kasi ang nangyayari we, because of the low uh, buffer stock being held by NFA ay uh, wala silang uh, masyadong influence sa palay procurement. Mm. But uh, may, may mga people who lalo na farmer groups, certain farmer groups who oppose the rice tarification law saying that uh, hindi nila kaya yung ma-meet ma yung competition kasi masyado raw, syempre subsidize yung, yung ibang crops from abroad and uh, the rice tarification law may basically opens up the market to these cheaper goods. So, um, but would you go so far as to, uh, would you support, do you think viable pa yung call nila to repeal the rice tarification law at this stage? I will, I will not uh, go to that extent, not until mm -hmm. This is proven by facts as a result of the midterm evaluation. Ganon po ako mag-decide. I cannot just anticipate. Mm -hmm. Going naman, sir, to your term in office, no? because um, this is also something na challenge to be presented to Marcos, right? He's, he's basically mamanahin niya yung mga challenges from the, from the current administration. And we saw in the past few years that the National Irrigation Administration was kind of a problem agency for the government. COA for the fifth straight year cited misty performance, maraming irregularities in contracts, maraming delays. Um, you got your wish to have it transferred back to the DA from the Office of the President, but now what? And have you been able to find out any root causes of the problems which caused these um, COA to find, make these findings? Yan ito po, uh, ang natuklasan ko, 
the NIA has only a yearly capacity of constructing new systems for only 25,000 average yearly. Yan. And I would like to point out, Pia, if we want to have long-term uh, sustainability for uh, rice production, we need to fully develop the irrigation system good for 1.1 million hectares of rice lands. So, kung ibibigay mo lang sa niya yung uh, construction, as I've said, that will take more than 50 years to finish the 1.1 million mm -hmm. hectares of rice lands to be irrigated. Ang ating panukala po na sa report ay mm -hmm. yung uh, build, build, build sa agriculture, mga malalaking infrastruktura na pangangailangan ay dapat ibigay sa public, private sector. sector. Mm -hmm. At uh, yung budget ng NIA, yun na lang pambayad yearly dun sa mga kontrata natin with the private sector. In that way, say in the next six years, if mm -hmm. this is properly done and having the private sector do the construction, we can do it in six years. So the more private sector engaged, the better. Because we need to sustain rice production dito sa Pilipinas. Now, another idea, Pia, mm -hmm. uh, nakikita ko, alam niyo during uh, rainy season, heavy rainfall, what is happening is this uh, NIA managed big dams. Ay palagi overflowing yan. Uh, you, you have seen that yourself. So, nawawala yung resource na tubig. At uh, ang ating panukala, in these big irrigation dams, why not a retrofitting be done so that yung mga uh, uh, tubig na being spilled over during heavy rainfall, during sa rainy season, ay mayroon secondary, tertiary, uh, uh, medium-sized dams so that this medium-sized dams downstream, I, uh, that will prevent flooding, that will uh, give more water for high-value agriculture, that will give more water also for aquaculture, including the big dams, where mm -hmm. aquaculture can be promoted in a big way. And you can have it as farm tourism area. So ang ganda po yung uh, idea na yan, sana may papatupad ng National Irrigation Administration, last two months lang nasa, ni, nasa DA sila. Mm -hmm. So I've had the chance to, during board uh, meetings, to give these new ideas to the uh, management of NIA. Mm -hmm. uh, Secretary, you mentioned you would want to dedicate the budget of NIA to a private uh, partnership for making these uh, new irrigation systems. So ano po yung mangyayari sa NIA in, in that regard? Ma, dissolve lang ba siya? I mean, what, what does NIA do without a budget then? Kailangan natin pa rin ng NIA to uh, continuously sustain, maintain yung uh, uh, dating uh, mga irrigation uh, dams natin. Kasi sila yung nagme-maintain, nagsusustain ngayon. They have also to continuously do feasibility studies doon sa mga bagong proyekto na sinasabi natin. They have to uh, do all these retrofitting studies para sa ganun ay handa na na pupunta sa PPP, sa Private Public uh, Partnership. Para sa ganun ay uh, hindi, it will take some time for the private sector to do the feasibility studies pa. So yun, yun ang major responsibilities pa rin ng NIA. Secretary, under President Duterte, uh, uh, very key agricultural agencies were put, um, yung mga linigay ni President Duterte in charge of those were retired military men. And among this is NIA, diba? it was headed by um, former military chief Ricardo Visaya. The NFA was also headed um, by a, a former soldier. So sir, um, some people are pointing out na hindi kaya ito yung reason kung bakit nag-fail yung mga yung mga agencies na to, uh, do you think it was the right move to appoint these uh, these soldiers, retired soldiers, to head these very technical agricultural agencies? Ako naman, dapat may uh, eksperto ang dapat sino man ang uh, i-appoint yan. Kasi kung may learning curve ka yan, it will take mm. some time. 
But uh, patapos na yun eh. So we have to make it possible na lahat na ilalagay dyan ay uh, yung experto. Otherwise, uh, it will take some time for them to appreciate their work. Mm-hmm. Uh, sir, why don't you think the NIA can carry out um, irrigation projects? Kasi yun naman yung mandate niya dapat, di ba? So why, it, it shouldn't be us having to rely on the private sector all the time. Is there a way to solve the problem within the administration? Did you see anything within the the NIA itself that can be fixed para mas magawa niya yung, yung mga irrigation uh, projects? Kahit dublihin mo yung kapasitad nila, say to 50,000 hectares, how many years will it take? More than 1 million hectares to finish. So, uh, wala, patay ng kabayo. Uh, meaning, the, the earlier, the better that we accelerate the construction of national irrigation systems to support long-term sustainability of rice production. Then you can downsize niya afterwards. Pag natapos lahat yung irrigation systems development at uh, ang mandato na lang nila is maintenance and operation, yung uh, uh, building up of the retrofitting uh, possibilities of the existing dams and the like. So mayroon pa rin, but you can downsize that, uh, that agency after some time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, sir, let's go to the legacy of Marcos in agriculture. Kasi alam naman natin with his father, di ba, all those years in power, talagang may, may, may mga nagawang uh, agriculture projects yung si Marcos Sr., who, which has received a lot of criticism and found to have had uh, certain mistakes done in the past. So, sir, the most famous or infamous of these would be the Masagana 99 and the Coconut Levy. Sir, you've said you support some version of Masagana 99, but you said there are also certain weaknesses to tweak. What would you tweak in that uh, program if it were to be resuscitated by the incoming administration? Okay, let's start with the rice program. So Masagana mm-hmm. 99 then, I, uh, accordingly, there are studies already done. So pag-aralan natin kung ano yung uh, dapat ituwid, dapat strengthen na components ng Masagana program. Dito po may panukala po tayo, dalawang programa, Masagana 150 kasi ang tina-target natin for inbred rice production ay 7.5 uh, metric tons uh, ang yield kada hectarea. Ano yung present yield natin ngayon? Nasa uh, 90 kabans pa lang tayo average. So yun, uh, that's a big jump. That's for inbred rice, 7.5 metric tons per hectare. For hybrid rice production, Masagana 200 ang tawag kasi mas mataas po ang ani dito po sa hybrid rice production. So 10 tons per hectare. Although there are hybrid uh, varieties that are already giving you 12, 14, 16, uh, 20 tons. Pero nationwide, uh, ito yung target natin sa hybrid rice production. So yung, kung ano yung... Uh, resulta ng pag-aaral nung nakaraan na dapat ituwid, yun po itutuwid natin. Kagaya po yung uh, credit support sa Masagana dati. So yun, kung ano po yung pwedeng may tuwid doon, itutuwid po natin. Uh, ano, ano, what ways do you think pwede maging mas sustainable yung rice, yung credit program for farmers? Kasi yun yung naman naging pinaka-problem ng Masagana 99, right? Oh yes, uh, you, you have to strengthen all the partners uh, in the value chain of the rice industry. You have to bring in more actively yung mga rural bankers. You have to bring in yung mga ma- maliliit na, na mimigay ng puhunan o credit sa kanayunan. At kolektahin dapat itong uh, mga loans. Yun po uh, yung uh, mga model loan programs natin ay mataas ang collection rate kasi natututukan. So dapat yun, matutukan. At we have also to study uh, PIA kasi disjointed ngayon ang planning ng food security plan uh, and program. Di ba ang DA na decentralized yung extension system? Binigay ko sa uh, local government units. Now, is that arrangement still the best arrangement? Dapat may pag-aaral. If not, then the, we can re-nationalize 
the delivery of extension services in agriculture back to the Department of Agriculture para talagang masundan. Eh, nung dating masagana, nandyan pa rin ang mga extension workers down to the municipalities reporting to the uh, Department of Agriculture. Di mas challenging ngayon. Mm -hmm. Pero sir, can, can the national government still do that when yung Mandana's ruling uh, is saying that we have to precisely decentralize these services? Pwede pa ba gawin yun with the Mandana's ruling? Pwede po, pwede po. At uh, kahit may Mandana's, batas, batas pa rin ang babago yan. So it's the is the direction of the leadership of the president to give that signal uh, kung kinakailangan i-renationalize yung extension system. Kailangan po yun. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, doon naman sa coconut levy because it's something also that people tend to bring up when they speak of the Marcos agriculture legacy. Um, marami na nangyari. We know that President Duterte signed the law creating a coconut industry and farmers trust fund um but the question now of a lot of people is how can we assure that the trust fund will not be pillaged or will really end up in the hands of or will really benefit coconut farmers on the remarks yeah, with uh, the law itself nandun lahat uh, properly uh, identified yung engagement and participation ng iba't ibang departamento ng gobyerno hindi nilang uh, pca uh, namamahala uh, there are about uh, 12, uh, more than 12 components of this uh, new law, the mm -hmm. Coconut Farmers and Industry Trust Fund Act. And uh, the betting in terms of what uh, are the specifics of these programs and projects in Agawama, and the last part of the process before full implementation, PIA, yung mm -hmm. pag ng executive order approving Yes. Uh, yung Coconut Farmers and Industry Development Plan by the President of the Republic. All that, nandyan na, that's why last, uh, last week, nandun tayo sa Lucena City mm -hmm. to uh, implement now and launch the uh, implementation, full implementation of these various components, nandun yung mga partner agencies, agencies natin. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a yearly budget, first year 10 billion, yes. second year uh, 10 billion also, third year I, uh, 15 billion, then uh, 25 billion, fourth and fifth year. So, uh, mas maganda po ang batas para dun sa uh, ating mga coconut farmers, makikinabang po sila. Secretary, paano po ba napipili yung uh, farmer representative doon sa um, yung board that will basically decide where the, the funds will go? I, alam ko kasi sir, may, ano diba, may farmer representative doon. How do we make yes. sure that they're really represented in the board? It was a long process, Pia, at ito yung ginawa itong last five months. Uh, they started with the province, yung mga asosasyon ng mga coconut farmers, then they elected who should be their representatives, mm -hmm. then nakipagtanggali sila at regional level. Then from regional level, the, the zonal level, that's uh, say island group, Luzon, mm -hmm. isa, Visayas, isa, Mindanao, isa. So dun sa island grouping, I may shortlisted uh, na mga farmer leaders uh, na representing various uh, organizations sa coconut industry. At uh, doon sa shortlist na ibigay natin sa mahal na Pangulo, siya na yung pumili out of the shortlisted candidates na dumaan sa proseso. So it was a long, uh, very participatory process and that you, can, you cannot say na railroaded itong process na ito. It's well designed, it's well uh, done, and the PCA management must be congratulated for that as well. Last two questions, Secretary. Um, ever since si Marcos Jr. announced his intention to take over the agriculture sector, um, ano po yung masasabi niyo experience niya? Or do you think he has the right knowledge and the right appreciation of the problems of the agricultural industry to really take helm of the sector and try to fix the problems? 
when he was provincial governor of Ilocos Norte po, binigyan din din niya na priority ang sektor ng agrikultura. So, yung ABCs ng value chain ng, uh, ng sektor ng agrikultura sa iba't ibang commodity industries. Uh, ngayon, ang Ilocos Norte ay more than 200% rice sufficient sila. So, uh, talagang uh, mayroon ka uh, uh, experience, karanasan at may uh, on the ground uh, realities na nandun ng governor siya ng Ilocos Norte. Hmm. And last question, Secretary Dar. Any emerging problems that you were able to spot in your time as Agri-Secretary which uh, you think kailangan uh, pagtuunan ng pansin ni, ni incoming President Ferdinand Marcos Jr.? Okay. Sabi. Ma- bali tatlong tatlong uh, broad uh, what I call areas muna. Ano mm. itong broad areas na ito? Number one, political will. Nandyan na. Di ba? Siya mm. na mismo. Oo po. Secretary of Agriculture. Uh, number two, topmost priority to the sector of agriculture is now given that billing so, ang pangatlo po na kailangan na tutukan na po ng ating mahal na Pangulo, kasi nandyan na yung dalawa, yung budgetary support, significant budgetary support. Now, presently, agriculture sector gets only about 1.5% of the national budget in the mm. country. While other countries in the ASEAN ay nasa 4 to 6% na sila. So, tayo ay kulaylat in terms of budgetary support. So, pag nagawa na po ni President Yan, with all the kind of prioritization to be done and all the directions he will lay down during his incumbency as Secretary of Agriculture, then yung trabaho po ng uh, bagong yung uh, papalit sa kanya, Secretary of Agriculture, ay siya na yung isang pinakamasaya ng uh, na Secretary of Agriculture kasi nai-lay down na yung basic foundation. There is political will, there is topmost priority given to the sector, and there will be significant budgetary allocation. So proper implementation na lang, proper design and implementation of programs and projects, yung uh, human capital sa DA must continue to be improved so that mm-hmm. it's a capacity can can happen much higher yung mga corrupt diyan maalis na para may pa, may uh, pagbabago na mangyayari we have to strengthen many of the offices uh, redirecting it to the new normal requirements so all these things uh, with with all this in place ako masayang masaya na po ako mm-hmm. Thank you very much, Secretary Dar, for your insights. Rest assured, we'll be continuing to monitor uh, the incoming administration on how they will handle this extremely critical Maybe. problem of food security. So, Mayor, 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 all right. You have been watching Rappler Talk. Again, this is Peter Nada. See you again next time. Goodbye.